Please sit down. Very warm welcome to everybody who's come out on this. I think it's a winter morning this <laughs> this week. I did say summer last week. Um, winter morning. Um, I think we're into the cold weather's arriving. Um, just to explain, uh, Jemima is still off sick. So we're very grateful to Nigel Saxton who has stood in at very short notice to take our service this morning. Anything to keep warm. <laughs> um, so, um, next Sunday the service is being taken by uh, Reverend Mark Rowland and I'm hoping that will be a communion service. Um, he has been asked why in Ballard but I haven't yet had it confirmed but it is it, most likely it will be communion service and of course it is Remembrance Sunday as well. Um, Saturday is Big Breakfast. Please do try and come and support it because this is the way we raise funds for our mission project and that's so um, if you can come and support it please do. Um, it's a fun social morning um, so you'll all be very welcome. And thank you. I'd like to hand over to Nigel now. Thank you. And, and thank you again for coming. Before we start, um, what if you gave to, you gave to a 10-year-old child half a jigsaw with, with half the picture? So on the box there's half the picture and in the, in the box are half the, half the pieces. And you say to him, uh, when, when you're 30, I'll give you the rest of the pieces so you can finish the jigsaw. And, and you think, well, that's a weird way to start a service because I'll be coming back to that later. Um, I always say this, don't I? If, if I forget something, which is quite likely, I forget the, some set of prayers or I forget to say it, or the next song is, put me right. <sighs> Now Jesus came to bring in what we call the kingdom of God and in relation to that God, God loves us as we are. Even when we, when we, there's, a, there's sometimes a failing of churches to expect you to be, to, to be get it right, to be able to be worthy of the, of the love of God and, and that's, that's really not the gospel at all. The God, the, the, Jesus show that God loves us as we are, but he loves us too much to, to leave us that way. Um, and as a forgiven people, our lives change for the better. Uh, now this kingdom of God thing, the, the kingdom of God, Jesus brought it in, but it's not arrived fully, and we can see that if we watch the news. Um, and in Hebrews, Paul says to us, what is faith? And he answers, it is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. So that's, that's important. In Philippians 4 verse 8, Paul tells us to think about things that are pure and lovely. So we'll do that in our first song by thinking about things that are, that are pure and lovely. Uh, the song is For the Beauty of the Earth. Thanks.
So if you wonder why I come down to join you, uh, on this, these, these sort of ratings where 10 is top and 1 is bottom, if Pavarotti is, is 10 for singing and, and cutting metal with a chainsaw, chainsaw is 1, I'm about 3. So that's why I don't stay, I don't stay where there's a, a microphone. <coughs> now, those who are mentally ill and depressed, they're, they're told not to watch too much news. Um, and since World War II, the end of World War II, we've had exposure to problems in the world like never before from television. And we see a lot of, we see a lot of sin for want of a better word, don't we? And it's fair to ask, since God is all-knowing and all-powerful, is he, is he caught off guard by sin? Now, for centuries, non-believers have asked, why does God allow pain and suffering? That, that's, that's happened for centuries. And believers like us, we, we complain sometimes, why does God sit on his hands when there's natural disasters and plagues and wars and misery? It's a, it's, it's a very old topic. Uh, I'm going to hit it by coming at it this way. And this is the dominant thought for the service. How does our free will, which we've got, how does that fit with God being in overall control? And that, that's a big one. So I'm not going to go too deep, but I'm going to hit this topic of how, how does God being in, over, being in charge, his plans, overall plans, work out with our free will? Anyway, I'll lead us in prayer now. Um, and we'll, we'll be finishing with the Lord's Prayer, which I'll ask you to join me in. But we'll, we'll go to prayers with just me leading for a start. Thanks. <clears throat> Glory be to you, Lord God, King of the universe. <clears throat> Glory be to you, Lord God, dwelling in radiant majesty. Glory be to you. Lord God, beyond our highest thoughts. Glory be to you, Lord God, from your people here on earth who have seen salvation. Holy God, let the body and blood of Christ remind us of the price paid for our salvation. On account of Jesus being willing to go to the cross and your power that raised him, we are promised eternal life. Therefore, help us to hold on to this truth with confidence and to face adversities with a long-term view of our eternal destiny. Almighty God, Lord, in Jesus you showed us the depth of your love for us and we now confess regarding those times when we have not returned your love with all our hearts, minds and strength and we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We can't go back and change one day of our lives. But through faith in Jesus, we can be restored to right standing with you. And we thank you for your love that does not weary. Amen. If you join me in the Lord's Prayer, I'll use the traditional version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, our next song, I think it begins, Chaos and Darkness Flee from God, or it certainly says that in it. But where God is absent, that's when chaos and darkness come in. Anyway, we'll, we'll sing this next song, God Whose Almighty Word. Thanks. leaders in prayers of intercession um, I'll, I'll when I say get it right granddad Lord in your mercy you, you respond by hear our prayers but before that I'll thank any, everybody for coming and especially those who do stuff like playing and reading and, and welcoming the preacher and, I mean these things don't just happen do they <sighs> okay, prayers of intercession. So when I say, Lord in your mercy, please respond by, hear our prayers. Father, we thank you for all your creation and for people of different cultures and environments. But where these differences result in death and injury and the loss of peace and security, we ask for wisdom for ourselves and for leaders, particularly for leaders, to find a way of bringing reconciliation among peoples of different nations and races and color and creed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, 
Father, we pray for all of humankind, especially for those whose lives are damaged and scarred by poverty, by persecution, by conflict, by hunger, and by injustice. Help us not to take our own freedom and privileges for granted. Empower us to be those who work to build up the weak and defend the oppressed because of our love for you and our knowledge of your character. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We now pray for those who through Jesus are able to call you Father, especially throughout Warwickshire. And we pray for now for a blessing on the people of this church and any friends and family we have who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, how majestic is your name. We praise and worship you and you alone. We thank you for coming to us in Jesus and for the life of your spirit within us. Help us all to reflect your glory in our daily lives and help us to be the people you intend us to be. And these prayers we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. I'll give a blessing to the offering and, and to everybody, really. I'll just sit, wait for the, the man to come in. And after the blessing of the offering, we'll have Psalm, the reading from Psalm 33. Thanks. Father, we worship you before money in our society which is obsessed with possessions too often money is put before people the example of Jesus is to put people first this is not to say that money doesn't have a use it is it, it is a useful tool if it's used wisely so we now ask you to bless all money given to the building of your kingdom and we also ask for an increased awareness of the of the many precious things that money just cannot buy. Amen. Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous, it is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Amen. Thanks, thanks for that. Well, in that psalm, we have these words. 
For the word of the Lord holds true and everything he does is worthy of our trust. Hmm. So, one issue is how much do we trust God? And, and to have confidence in God, we've got to be sure of his, his planning in a way. And yet often we see the world unravelling on account of sin. Now, my big fat theology book lists the attributes of God. That's, that shows you the character of God. There's 32 attributes of God. And they're listed according to whether we share them. Things like patience. We share with God, we hope. But things that we, we don't share with God, such as invisibility. There's, there's 22 attributes. But the, the ones I'm going to concentrate on today are omnipotence, which is, the, which is the same meaning as sovereignty. That means all-powerful. Now, God created the world. He not only created it, but he preserves it and governs it. And this is a process called providence. I won't, I won't give you too much, much theology, I hope. But providence is defined as, followed, as follows. God is continually, continually, continually involved with all his created things and directs them to fulfil his purposes. And, and you sometimes wonder, don't you, when you see the wars all over the world and, and persecution of of, of believers you think well what's happening here now for believers I'm going to look at these words from Paul in Philippians for God is working in you giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him but even for us as believers things happen to us that that, that we don't really want to happen you know, life, life can be tough. Um, and so there's mystery. I think we've got to accept, um, I can't explain it all, I'm going to have a go. But there is mystery in, in our understanding of God. Uh, so we'll now sing God Moves in Mysterious Ways. And after that we'll have the reading from Ephesians. Thanks.
chapter one from you, Effusions. Is that right, sir, the way I spelt it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> Um, verses um, 9 to 14. God did what he had proposed and made known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete by means of Christ. This plan, which God will complete when the time is right, is to bring all creation together. Everything in heaven and on earth with Christ as head. All things are done according to God's plan and decision. And God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Let us then, who were the first to hope in Christ, praise God's glory. And you also become God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought you salvation. You believed in Christ and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised his people. And this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those who are his. Let us all praise his glory. Amen. Now, in verse 11, it says this. We have been chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity, in conformity with the purpose of his will. So, many believers, now, many unbelievers think of life as pure chance. On a particular day, a person gets in the car and they have an accident and they think that if they'd set off five minutes later they wouldn't have they wouldn't have had that accident this is this is a, a sort of world view of chance and this phrase if only flourishes with, with this world view if only I'd set off five minutes earlier, or if only I'd set off five minutes later, that wouldn't have happened. If only my wife had not decided to her mum, decided not to visit her mum that day, or if only I'd not gone out that icy morning. So that's the sort of life is chance. It's, everything's chance. But once, once we bring in the supernatural, with belief in God being in control, then, then there's another extreme, once we bring in the supernatural. So we've, we've got on one end of, the, of this, the ruler, really, or the spectrum, we've got chance. On the other end is everything is planned out, um, Regardless of what we do, our lives are planned out from end to end. And, that, and that's also an error because it's a fatalistic view. It's like saying, well, nothing I do um, affects what's going to happen. That's, it's called fatalism. And, and we, we don't believe that either. So we're, we're somewhere in the middle. <coughs> If we, hope, if we follow Jesus, we're somewhere in the middle. Now, according to de denominations, some are more that way, some push more towards the chance side of things, 
and some push more towards the, well, predestination way of, of going. But one thing we can be sure is that there's a big difference in the lives of believers and non-believers. But anyway, we are Methodists and we believe that, yes, God has overall control, but as individuals we also have free choices which really matter. And so there's a, there's a sort of positive tension here. Between, between what we are doing and, and, what's, and, and God's being in control. Hmm. So now we'll have the reading from Romans and we'll just, um, unless I've missed, I've, missed, I've missed a song. Ah, no, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, have we, have we missed a song altogether? How many have we had? Three. Three, that's great. I'm, I'm on track then. Great, so we'll have the reading from Romans and then we're trying to tie this up, this business of free will and God being in control. Thanks. <coughs> Romans chapter 8, verses 23 to 39. Not only so but be ourselves, for have the first fruit of the Spirit grown inwards as we, are, as we wait eagerly for your, our adoption of sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to conform to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he glorified. What then shall we say in response to these, these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus, Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? as it is written. For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor light, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Thanks, Margaret. That, that's an absolutely huge, it's, it's an absolutely colossal reading. But the, the, the verse I'm, I'm going to focus on is, is 28. And now we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So let's pretend that we are Christians in Ukraine. We're going to find it hard to accept that verse, aren't we, in, in, the, in the present time. And now we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Because we're being killed and wounded and, and made homeless and... And, and all believers, in, actually, in this life, not all, but many believers in this life, actually endure great hardships. So I'm going to move into another attribute of God. You know, I started with 22 attributes. Well, this is, this is the attribute of God, which is eternal. And it's only when we factor this in that verse 28 can actually make sense. And to me, anyway, you can come back to me on this one. And we go back, let's go back to the jigsaw. So that the child only had half the jigsaw, but we've only got half the jigsaw too. We've only, this life that we're in now, this, this, this life before we die, it's, it's, it's half the jigsaw. And, and we might not, it might not be a, a, pretty, a very good jigsaw, it might, we might not even like the picture, but if we go push this jigsaw analogy a bit further, perhaps key events in our life like getting married or, or having children or whatever, they, they can be the edges and the, and the corners of the jigsaw, but the middle bit is missing. I think we've got to focus on there's more to life than we can see and touch. And we believe that, don't we? In Matthew 16, verse 26, Jesus said this, How do you benefit if you gain the whole world? That's, that's stuff, isn't it? But lose your own soul in the process. Is anything more, worth more than your soul? So there's more in this, in this present world than we can see and touch. And Paul tells us that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers in, in heavenly places. And he says our weapons are faith, and praise and worship. Now, I read a, a the, in a book by a man, a theologian called John Piper, and he writes this. This isn't me, this is John Piper. Jesus had a, a lively, daily awareness of heaven and hell. These awesome realities were always relevant for the way he lived and taught. He was radically reasonable about these things. So I'm, what I'm trying to say to myself and to, to you, hopefully, is that it's only after death do we get all the life, all the pieces in our jigsaw. It's only, just as the child, when he gets to 30, we give him the, the second half and he, and, he, and he gets the full picture. So when we die, we get, the, we get all the pieces. And, to, and to, sort of, to sort of just expand this a little, Methodist missionaries went off to... West Africa in the 19th century, quite early 19th century, and they went age 21 or two, and their life expectancy was about three years maximum. And because and they knew that, but they still went. Um, there's a danger. I'm preaching to myself now. There's a danger in getting comfortable in this life, isn't there? And if we, we think back to a place where, where we were not, the slaves in, in USA, their, their lives were very, very hard. In fact, their lives were, were dreadful. And so the future meant a lot more to them than to us. And, and their songs, their gospel songs, were there to uplift their spirits, tell their stories, express solidarity, and also their longings for a coming freedom which would come with death. So the, the second part of our reading from Romans, which we had from Margaret, that tells us that our future lies in the, the place where the love of God will envelop us in a way 
we can only experience faintly at the moment. Now in that song, uh, Jesus, lover of my soul, it says, it says this, Hide us, O my Saviour, hide, till the storm of life is past, safe into the haven guide, O receives our, slow, our souls at last. So I'm not preaching pie in the sky now because we've got, we've got heaven through our faith, we've got heaven here on earth, but there's better things to come. And it's only when at the jigsaw, our jigsaw of our lives is complete that we'll fully experience the love of God, God which we'll now, which we'll finish by singing, um, O oh love that will not let me go. And then I'll have a blessing after, the, after this last song. Thanks. getting 50 minutes but um, in Africa where they go on for two hours and the, and the preacher starts to fail the, the, the congregation shouts help him Lord uh, so anyway I, I won't need that I hope uh, I'll give you a blessing to finish as we move into your future Lord our hope our hope is in you we place our dreams and aspirations into your hands and, think, and trust that things can change for the better. Give us your vision for what is ahead and use us to build your kingdom here. Amen.